Uh, I'm not a theologian. My <laughs> special is in cultural philosophy. That's why I, I wouldn't um, say that I know a lot about um, Pope Francis' idea of a culture of encounter. Although I, I read um, Lauda to see, and um, I particularly like his um, integral approach and that he acknowledges the ambivalent role of culture in the context of a socio-ecological transformation. And a lot of, not a lot of people do that. And I find that extremely important. Um, moreover, um, he was so kind and sent us a few quotes um, by Pope Francis. And um, I went through them and um, some things really stood out for me um, quite enormously, I have to say. First of all, he highlights the importance of proximity. And for me, that means experiencing the otherness of the other instead of just trying to get some form of knowledge to mm. be able to deal with this otherness in a way that keeps me in a distance. Um, and yet I like that notion of proximity, which again means to expose myself to that experience of otherness. Um, he also says sort of in the same way that encounter means risk. So you have to take a risk. It exposes us and affects us. I really like that notion. And I think that is also distinct um, in this approach. Um, and maybe one last thing is um, uh, what I found also um, extremely relevant. It is when he's saying it is not just about migrants, it is about our own fear. And that um, sort of reflects my own approach and my own research on um, the importance of becoming alien able, to be able to be, um, yeah, to let yourself be transformed by the encounter of mm -hmm. um, people that are frightening maybe at the beginning because we are um, experiencing some form of otherness in them, yeah. I have done that, so the, the experiential side is extremely important to me. I cannot do philosophy without that. However, as a philosopher, I find it also very important to define terms. So I would first of all ask, what does culture mean and what does encounter mean? And culture, for example, is a huge term. This whole semester, I teach a course on um, cultural philosophy, and we just try to find out what this term means. So it's mm -hmm. very complex. My own take on culture goes back to an American anthropologist, to forget, who defines culture as a web of meaning. And I find that highly relevant for the topic that um, we are looking at, um, the culture of encounter, because culture as a web of meaning is the basis that we need to engage with other cultures. Without it, we are helpless because we have nothing to stand on. We need a certain position to bring into the dialogue, into the encounter, um, in order to have it transformed um, and to engage with otherness. So that's what I would say. Um, culture is a fragile web of meaning. I really like the metaphor of the web because it um, captures the fragility and the um, that it can easily be and yet people are very protective when it comes to their cultures. And the, the counter term would be, you know, the whole notion of um, fundamentalism, when people are afraid of losing their cultural web of meaning, and they often react in, in that extent, um, extremist um, way to protect um, the, this web that is um, so important. And in count, pardon. Go ahead. I was just saying that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and encounter for me, again, it can mean so many things. Um, I once learned from a Cree elder um, that encounter, um, or he phrased it as an ethical space of engagement. Mm -hmm. 
that's a very neat understanding of encounter and an ethical space of engagement. It opens a space um, where people meet, a space that um, maybe is something like, again, another philosopher I, I find very important, Martin Buber, who talks about genuine dialogue and he um, distinguishes genuine dialogue from um, just a technical dialogue where we try to find out something about the other person or we engage with another person about something, but it's not engaging in terms of that openness that allows the engagement to um, change me through that engagement. It's just technical. It's about getting to know about something. Um, and then an, another distinction he comes up with is, um, which is again, not genuine dialogue. Um, he talks about a monologue disguised as dialogue. So we pretend to engage in dialogue and yet we just want to you know, bring our own notion of whatever across without really being open to um, bring something in that I am also willing to, to give away or to be able to let go. Um, so that I think is for me is, um, is encounter. So this ethical space of engagement there I open myself up to genuine dialogue. And now bringing both together, culture of encounter is again um, to bring in my own being, my own identity, and yet at the same time to allow it to be transformed through the engagement. And in that engagement, a new culture evolves or the two cultures, my culture and your culture, um, evolve to something that's ours and none of us could have done just by ourselves. And it happens through the engagement. We cannot do it technically. <laughs> it just happens. And that's where we built our beings on and our togetherness. So that's, I think, bringing both together. Yeah. Very often I get invited to, um, um, yeah, to conduct workshops and seminars on what they call intercultural competence. And what people often want in these seminars is some form of a toolbox where you um, get tools in terms and in, in forms of competencies that um, are able to deal with the otherness of the other in order to um, face your own um, discomfort in that encounter. So, but what I realized very often is that that is not enough because the otherness of the other cannot, then you have this neat little toolbox and then you, you experience something that just throws you off and you cannot <laughs> just <laughs> you know, have these tools ready available to deal with it. It's all about you in that moment. And that's why my um, take on this is to help or to, um, um, instead of giving people competencies to, challenge them with themselves to engage with their own discomfort in in these moments yeah mm -hmm. and I, I just maybe just one example but for, out of my own um like I, I did a lot of research in, in the canadian arctic with inuits and um i learned before i went there i learned a lot about the people you know the competencies the knowledge about the difference that I expected to see there or experience there. So I had a lot of knowledge in my head, but when I was there, nothing really was the way you know, I expected it. And that just um, made it more difficult for me, you know, because I had such a different understanding.
Well, I think all three points are important. Um, first, artistic protection. Um, I talked about the culture of meaning. Mm -hmm. And what Clifford Getz is saying is that this um, web of meaning that um, he defines as culture um, is, or I should say, well, let me take, just using that metaphor, um, the connecting knots of this web are symbols we use in our daily lives. And some of the most important symbols are, for example, our language, but also our you know, literature, film, the, uh, any kinds of arts. And the question that we should ask ourselves, how should our symbols that hold our web of meaning together look like mm -hmm. if we want it to be a culture of encounter and what kind of symbols portray maybe a meaning um, that is not saying or not conducive to what we want in terms of in engagement and encounter so and i think um artistic production can be very very valuable to create such symbols that are the connecting knots holding this web together and creating something together in that engagement and that in between of the engagement that um, really creates this kind of web that we want. Um, and the second point, interreligious and intercultural dialogue. Again, I really like to look at words. What does inter mean, for example? Inter means in between. It is a place that opens up only if we are able to open up to genuine dialogue. In this process of engaging, we create a cultural web of meaning, again, which doesn't belong to me or to you, but it becomes a life of its own. Um, yeah, and, and the, the, the issue of um, mobilizing um, around global um, challenges that we are faced with right now, I had to think of um, Ruth Cohn's um, theme-centered interaction. And she captures her thoughts in a model symbolized by a triangle. And now I talked a lot about I and thou um, in engaging in a dialogue, but she also has a third part of this triangle, a third point, the theme. And I think she's very right um, in saying that all three corners need to be in a balance. So it's about bringing myself into this engagement, into this dialogue, into this encounter, and creating a we, but this we has somehow to deal with um, certain themes. There is a reason why people get together. And, and this reason is, is, is very important because it activates people to solve issues or to um, come up with solutions to discuss or um, yeah, to start and um, changing things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, yeah, that's, that's very important. Yeah.